In recent years, fast-paced lifestyle has increased the demand for ready-to-eat food. Have you ever wondered the foods that you are consuming is safe for consumption? Yes, food preservation helps us to consume safe foods. Of the various means of preserving foods, the use of heat finds very wide application. The simple act of cooking, frying, broiling or otherwise heating foods prior to consumption are forms of basic food preservation. In addition to making foods more tender and palatable, cooking destroys a large proportion of microorganisms and natural enzymes in food, thus foods, cooked foods generally can be held longer than uncooked foods. However, cooking generally does not sterilize a product, so even if it is protected from recontamination, food will spoil in comparatively short period of time. This time is prolonged in foods by cooking it with high temperature processing. Come, let us look at what is high temperature processing or heat processing using steam or hot water. The learning objectives for today is the overall goal of this lesson is that you gain an appreciation of how various food commodities or groups are preserved through the application of thermal energy. More specifically, you will be able to interpret the basis of thermal food processing, compare and contrast thermal processing categories which includes blanching, pasteurization and commercial sterilization. Blanching, let's look at the theory, the equipments that are used, the effect of blanching on foods and the effect of blanching on microorganisms. Here you see how food is blanched. The food that ought to be blanched are boiled in hot water for few seconds and they are taken out and plunged in cold water. Blanching serves a variety of function, one of the most common ones being to destroy enzymatic activity in vegetables and some fruits prior to further processing. To achieve adequate enzymatic inact inactivation, food is heated rapidly to a preset temperature held for a preset time and then cooled rapidly to near ambient temperatures. Blanching is also combined with peeling and cleaning of foods to achieve saving in energy consumption, space and equipment cost. Blanching is an example of unsteady state heat transfer involving convective surface heating by steam or hot water and conduction of heat from the surface to the interior of food. Mass transfer of material into and out of the food is also important for the yield of product and nutrient losses. The following factors affect blanching conditions. The size and shape of the piece of food the thermal conductivity of the food which is influenced by the type, cultivator and degree of maturity, the blanching temperature and method of heating, the convective heat transfer coefficient. What are the various types of blanching technologies used in food industry? We have hot water blanching, steam blanching, high humidity hot air impringement blanching, microwave and radio frequency branching, homic heat blanching and infrared blanching. What are the benefits of blanching? It inactivates enzymes, enhances drying rate and product quality, it expels air inside plant tissue and reduces browning reaction. On the other hand, Blanching also decreases microbial load in the external surface of the skin. It helps in peeling of products and removal of skin 
and it also removes pesticides and toxic residues. Blanching also increases extraction of bioactive components from plant foods. Other purposes of blanching include cleaning the surface of the plant, removing damaged seeds and foreign material from the external surface of the fruits and vegetables, killing parasites and its eggs, and reducing the oil uptake of plant products. What are the types of blanching available? We can blanch food using steam blanchers and hot water blanchers. Steam blanchers in general, this is a preferred method for food with large area of cut surfaces as leaching losses are much smaller than those found using hot water blanchers. At its simplest, a steam blancher consists of a mesh conveyor belt that carries food through a steam atmosphere in a tunnel. The residence time of the food is controlled by the speed of the conveyor and the length of the tunnel. Typically, a tunnel is 15 meters long and 1 to 1.5 meters wide. What are hot water blanches? There are a number of different designs of blanches, each of which holds the food in hot water at 70 to 100 degrees for a specific time and then removes it to dewatering cooling section. In this wide, widely used reel blancher, food enters a slowly rotating cylindrical mesh drum which is partly submerged in hot water. The food is moved through the drum by internal flights. The speed of the rotation and length controls the heating time. What are the advantages and limitations of steam versus hot water blanches? Steam blanches, there are smaller losses of water soluble components and higher yield product yield, smaller volume of effluent and lower disposal cost than water blanches, particularly with air cooling instead of water. Steam blanches have better energy efficiency, better retention of product color, flavor and texture. On the other hand, it does have limitations, limited cleaning of foods, so washes are all also required. Uneven blanching, some, it happens sometime when you blanch food with steam blanchers. Some loss of mass from the food. Larger and more complex equipment with higher maintenance cost is necessary. It is more difficult to clean. Whereas hot water blanchers have lower capital cost than steam blanchers. They blanch food uniformly by producing uniform heat and it uses less floor space. On the other hand, hot water blanches do have limitations which include large volumes of dilute effluent results in higher cost for both purchase of water and effluent treatment. There is a risk of contamination of foods by thermophilic bacteria in hot water blanches and the turbulence may cause physical damage to some food products. Here you see a turbo flow steam blancher. In the steam blanching, we, you see a illustration of how steam blanchers with counter current cooling can be utilized in food industry. Food enters through this area inlet. It's preheated and washed and the wastewater is sent out. This is sent inside an insulated tunnel where foods are blanched using steam, a hot steam. After the blanching process, foods are immediately cooled using chilled water and the pre-treated water pump lets out the water and the food comes out blanched and cooled. Here you see a picture of clean flow rotate drum blancher. Now let's see what are the effects of blanching on food. 
Blanching causes physical and metabolic changes within food cells that result in cell death. Heat damages cytoplasmic and other membrane which becomes permeable and results in the loss of cell turgor. Water and solutes passed into and out of cells result in nutrient losses. Heat also disrupts subcellular organelles and their constituents become free to interact within the cell. There are sensory changes that happen during blanching process. Over blanching can cause excessive softening and loss of flavor of the food. Effect of blanching on nutrients. Some minerals, water soluble vitamins and other water soluble components are lost during blanching process. Losses are mostly due to leaching, thermal destruction and to a lesser extent oxidation. Fat soluble components like beta carotene are largely retained while heat sensitive components like phenolic oxidants and vitamins are lost during blanching process. Typically, vitamin losses are about 15 to 20 percent for riboflavin, 10 percent niacin, and 10 to 30 percent of ascorbic acid, and 50 percent of folic acid is lost during blanching process. There is 30 percent loss of thiamine in case of spinach blanching before freezing and losses of 9 to 60 percent when it comes to a frozen product. Blanching reduces the number of contaminating microorganisms on the surface of the food and hence assists in subsequent preservation. The second type of thermal processing that we are going to see today is pasteurization. Pasteurization has become an industry standard for numerous food companies, mostly notably anyone dealing with milk products. However, pasteurization can be used for foods and semi-solid products to prevent the spread of diseases and improve shelf life. Pasteurization has several benefits when used to treat food products, making it an important part of many food processing industries. Among foods and semi-solid products that benefit from pasteurization are the following jams and jellies, salad dressing, cream, soap, stew, canned goods, baby food, sauces and salsa, syrups, yogurt, condiments such as ketchup, mayonnaise and mustard. This listen, this list isn't comprehensive. Of course, any product that can withstand high temperature without being significantly altered and which may be at risk of exposure to microorganisms can benefit from pasteurization. Now what is pasteurization? Pasteurization is a relatively mild heat treatment in which liquid foods are exposed mostly to a heat below 100 degrees. Any process, treatment or combination thereof that is applied to food to reduce the most resistant microorganisms of public health significance to a level that is not likely to present a public health risk under normal conditions of distribution and storage. The purpose of pasteurization for different foods includes the pH level. There are low pH foods like fruit juice and beer. Let's look at the main purpose in, of pasteurization in these foods. Fruit juice. In fruit juice, enzyme inactivation happens which and also it destroys the spoilage microorganism. Usually, fruit juices are pasteurized at 65 degrees for 30 minutes or at 77 degrees for 1 minute and higher temperatures are also used. Beer In beer, destruction of spoilage microorganisms like wild yeast, lactobacillus species and residential yeast is done. Beer is pasteurized 
at 65 to 68 degrees for 20 minutes in bottle or it is pasteurized at 72 to 75 degrees for 1 to 4 minutes. We do have pasteurization for foods which has pH more than 4.5 which includes milk, ice cream, eggnogs, cream and liquid egg. In milk, there is destruction of microorganisms and other spoilage organisms and also inactivation of enzyme. Milk is pasteurized at 63 degrees for 30 minutes or to a maximum of 90 degrees for 0.5 seconds. Ice creams, milk and eggnogs are also pasteurized to destroy pathogens present in them. It can be pasteurized from 69 degrees to 82 degrees. At the maximum temperature which is 82.2 degrees, it is pasteurized for 15 seconds. Cream, chocolate with milk that has more than 10% milk fat are also pasteurized to kill spoilage microorganisms at the maximum temperature of 75 degrees for 15 seconds. Liquid egg, especially to destroy salmonella species, is done and the pasteurization temperature is at 60 degrees for 3.5 minutes. There are different methods of pasteurization. We have low temperature hold method which pasteurizes food to 63 degrees for 30 minutes and then it is cooled at 7 degrees. We have high temperature short time pasteurization. The conditions for which include heating the food to 71.5 degrees for at least 15 seconds. This can be otherwise called as flash pasteurization. We have ultra high temperature pasteurization which heats or pasteurizes food at 138 degrees for at least 2 seconds. This is an extreme pasteurization condition which kills all the microorganisms keeping milk in a closed sterilized container at room temperature. These are other methods of pasteurization. As you can see in each of this method there is variation in time and in temperature. The basic method would be VAT pasteurization, whereas the advanced techniques we have ultra high pasteurization methods. Estimation of pathogenic microorganisms in pasteurization. How do you estimate the presence of pathogenic microorganisms in foods that are pasteurized? Phosphatase activity test is a simple method especially for milk pasteurization. If phosphatase activity is found, it is assumed that the heat treatment was inadequate to destroy the pathogenic microorganisms or unpasteurized milk has been contaminated the pasteurized products. A similar test for effectiveness of liquid egg pasteurization is based on residual amylase activity. These are some of the conventional foods that are pasteurized using different pasteurization techniques. As we have seen, milk can be pasteurized using low temperature hold pasteurization or HTST or the ultra high temperature pasteurization. We do have ice creams, different fruit wines, beer, dried fruits, different juices, carbonated beverages which are also pasteurized using different techniques which are basically bottled in bulk and pasteurized. We have pasteurization for packed foods as well as unpacked foods. The pasteurizer used for these foods would differ significantly. For packed foods, we used tunnel pasteurizer. Tunnel divided into a number of heating zones. Very fine hot water sprays are used to heat the container. Pasteurized foods pass through each zone of the conveyor incrementally rises in temperature until pasteurization is achieved. Cool water is then sprayed and it cools the container through the tunnel. Temperature in the heating zone are gradually increased by reducing the amount of air in the steam air mixtures. Pasteurization for unpacked foods. 
Two main heat exchangers are commonly used for unpacked food pasteurization, which includes plate heat exchangers and tubular heat exchangers. Large-scale pasteurization of low viscous food like milk, milk products, fruit juices, liquid egg, beer and wine are usually treated to plate heat exchangers. Food is sprayed into a vacuum chamber and dissolved air is removed by vacuum pump prior to pasteurization. Here you see a picture of plate heat exchanger of how you will be pasteurizing viscous foods. Plate heat exchanger, food is pumped from a blank tank. A balance food is pumped from a balance tank to a regeneration section where it is preheated by food that has already been pasteurized. It is then heated to pasteurizing temperature in a heating section. It's hold until achieving the pasteurization temperature. If the pasteurization temperature is not reached, flow diversion valve automatically returns the food in the blank tank to be repasteurized. The pasteurized product is then cooled into the regeneration section and then further cooled by cold water. If necessary, chilled water also uses in the cooling section. The regeneration of heat in this way leads to substantial saving in energy which is up to 95% of the heat which can be recovered from the plate heat exchanger. These are the recurrent counter current flow through plate heat exchanger. Picture A you see one pass with four channels per medium and in the picture B you see two passes with two channels per pass and medium. Number two, we can also use shell and tubular or multi-tube heat exchanger for unpacked foods. It is important and so widely used in modern food industry. It is designed by various standards and codes. This is the shell and tube heat exchanger as you see here. Liquid foods pass through the multiple tube chambers. Outer tube carrying heat liquid to opposite direction of heat. Liquid food. Heating medium. Hot steam or hot water is used. This flow direction is called as counter flow. Counter flow direction is more efficient method than parallel flow method. Cooling with chilled water or brine. Multiple tubular heat exchanger is well efficient method compared with single tubular heater. Heating surface area of food is high. Complete and time efficient pasteurization is done. Retention of more sensory characters like aroma and flavor can be seen when you are using multiple tubular heat exchanger for pasteurization. To increase heat absorption efficiency, the outer tubular chamber insulates with heat resistant materials. Tubular heat exchanger can be clean nitric oxide and sodium hydroxide. Problem is deposits of the heat surfaces cannot be seen and hardly removal by me mechanical methods. What is the effect of pasteurization? on foods. Pasteurization as I have already told you is a mild heat treatment and it brings about minor changes to nutrients and sensory characteristics. The shelf life can be from few days or to few weeks. What is the effect of pasteurization on color, flavor and aroma? Fruit juices, the main problem is color discolorization or deterioration by enzymatic browning because of the presence of the enzyme polyphenol oxidase. This browning reaction promoted by the presence of oxygen or the oxidation process. There is also whiteness of raw milk and pasteurized milk differs due to the homogenization process. Pasteurization has no measurable effects on the color of the milk. 
whereas pigments of plants and animals are also unaffected. Small loss of volatile aromatic components are found in juice after pasteurization, which can be recovered later using other processes. What is the effect of pasteurization on vitamins? There are significant amount of losses of vitamin C and minimum losses of carotenoids. Changes to milk, there's 5% loss of serum protein and small changes to vitamin content are also observed in milk. However, pasteurization is the most effective method to retain the maximum amount of vitamins compared to other heat treatment. The next method that we are going to look at is ultra high temperature processing or aseptic processing. Ultra high temperature processing or UHD processing of milk involves heating milk for 1 to 8 seconds at 135 to 154 degrees. Aseptic packaging of ultra high temperature treated milk produces a stable shelf life product. Aseptic packaging involves placing a sterile product in a sterile package. Such processing must take place in a sterile environment. UHD has an important advantage over other methods of heat treatment as the shelf life is about at least 6 months without refrigeration for any food product that is treated with UHD. Aseptic processing and packaging is a sophisticated food preservation method where the food is sterilized or commercially sterilized outside the container and then placed in previously sterilized container and sealed in an aseptic environment. Aseptic system uses ultra high temperature sterilization method which is a fast heating treatment at temperatures higher than pasteurization temperature. In aseptic treatment or UHD, paper and plastic packaging materials are sterilized, formed, filled and sealed in a continuous operation at the end of the processing line. Aseptic processing is also used with metal cans, large plastic or metal drums or large flexible pouches. Packages for aseptic processing may be sterilized using heat, chemicals, irradiation or a combination of these methods. What is UHD? Heating of milk results in death of microorganisms. Our whole aim is to preserve the product from pathogenic microorganisms. While some bacteria are destroyed by pasteurization only, some survive this thermal treatment and therefore UHD need to be used. Bacillus subtilis and Bacillus stereothermophilus spores are very heat resistant and therefore pasteurization does not kill them. So these two spores can be killed only by UHD processing. Now what is the difference between conventional retort packaging or retort processing and aseptic packaging. There are differences in terms of product sterilization, which is very precise in terms of aseptic processing. Process calculation in terms of fluids and particles are routine and complex in aseptic processing. Low acid foods can be treated. The sterilization process is more complex in terms of aseptic processing. Energy efficiency is always better when it comes to aseptic processing as it saves more than 30% energy. Sensory qualities are better and heat sensitive foods can be processed using UHD. Nutrient losses are very minimal. There is always scope for value addition. The sustainability for uh, microwaves, microwaves can be utilized. It can be used when it comes to aseptic processing. Production rate are much higher compared to that of aseptic processing. Flexibility for different containers. Single fillers for different containers can be used when it comes to aseptic processing technique. 
And survival of heat resistant bacteria is very common when it comes to milk. Post processing additions are possible. For example, probiotics can be added to milk after it has been processed by aseptic technique, while in retorting, it is not possible. What are the two ways in which aseptic processing can be done? It can be done by direct heating or by indirect heating method. Under direct heating, we use steam injection or steam infusion. Whereas in indirect heating method, we use plate heat exchangers, tube and shell heat exchangers and scrap surface heat exchangers. Steam injection is one of the fastest method of heating and cooling resulting in high retention of sensory characteristics and nutritional properties, therefore suitable for heat sensitive foods, less product for foiling or burning on reaction is seen in steam injection. Steam infusions are great control over processing conditions than steam injection methods. Products does not come in contact with hot surface and burn on is reduced. Low risk of localized overheating of the product, which is very less, more suitable for higher viscous products when compared to that of steam injections. Is scanning. Scanning is the application of temperature of food that are high enough to destroy essentially all microorganisms. Sealed in airtight sealing, the foods are then sterilized with the containers. What is the process of scanning? The first process in canning involves cleaning of the food material and peeling of the external skin. Food is then blanched by immersing the raw material into hot water and exposing it to live steam and plunging it onto the cold water. Then the food is filled. Filling the can with food along with either sugar syrup or brine solution having a head space on the top. Exhausting process, air is expelled by passing through hot water or steam and vacuum is created in the head space. Then the can is sealed. The containers are sealed using machines and this process is called as the seaming process. You have sim single seaming and double seaming cans. The can which is sealed or seamed is then sterilized. Steam is applied under high pressure to prevent spoilage of the food by microorganism. The sterilized cans are then cooled. Immediate cooling is given to prevent softening of the food or change in color. It is done by means of cold air or water. So this is the process of canning. In the last section of this presentation, we will be looking at what is industrial cooking. Industrial cooking is cooking that is carried out in centralized kitchen that supplied to schools, meals on wheels, home delivered foods or in-flight meals. Kitchen in hospitals and other institutions, large hotels, cruise liners, food service outlets, industrial production of chilled or frozen ready-to-eat meals for retail sales. What are the types of industrial cooking? Cooking methods involve moist heat method, dry heat method, combination of moist and dry heat method which is bracing and other alternative techniques which are microwave cooking and solar cooking. Let's look at what is moist heat method. The first type of moist heat method is boiling. Boiling is a method of cooking food by just immersing them in water at 100 degrees and maintaining the water at the temperature till the food becomes tender. Rice, egg, dal, meat, roots and tubers are cooked by boiling. What are the advantages? It's a very simple method, does not require special skills and equipments. Uniform cooking can be achieved by boiling, but there are some disadvantages for boiling. Continuous excessive boiling 
leads to damage in the structure and texture of food. Loss of heat labile nutrients such as vitamin B and vitamin C will be more and if the water is going to be discarded after boiling. Boiling takes more time to cook foods and fuel might, might be wasted. Water soluble pigments may be lost which can also affect the pigments that are present in the foods. This is the jacketed kettle that is used for the purpose of boiling and steaming. Stewing is the next type of moist heat method that is used in industries to prepare viscous liquids like soup. It refers to the simmering of food in a pan with a tight fitting lid using small quantities of liquid to cover only half of the food. This is a slow method of cooking. The liquid is brought to boiling point and the heat is reduced to maintain simmering temperature of 8 to 9 degrees. The food above the liquid is cooked by the steam generated within the pan. Apples, meat, root vegetables and legumes are stewed. The advantages of stewing include loss of nutrients avoided since the water used for cooking is not discarded, therefore flavor is also retained. Whereas this method is time consuming and there is also wastage of fuel. Steaming process is the third type of moist heat method. It is a method of cooking foods in steam generated from viscous boiling water in a pan. The food to be steamed is placed in a container and is not in direct contact with water or liquid. It leaves custard, idiapam, and other foods are also steamed. Vegetables are also steamed at times. Mills. Less chance of burning and scorching can occur due to the steaming process. Texture of the food is better, light and fluffy. Cooking time is less and fuel wastage is also less. Steamed foods can contain less fat, hence easily digested and good for children, aged persons and patients who will need therapeutic diets. Nutrient loss is also minimized, whereas the demerits are you need special equipment for steaming and this method is limited to the preparation of selected foods. This is a equipment used in industrial cooking for cook, quench, chill mission. This is a cook, quench, chill mission which can be used for large scale preparation of steaming, boiling purposes. This is a branch pan. Next method is pressure cooking. When steam under pressure is used, the method is known as pressure cooking and the equipment used is pressure cooker. In this method, the temperature of boiling can be raised above 100 degrees under pressure. This method can be less time consuming compared to the other methods and there is a retention of nutrients and flavor. The fuel and time are conserved as different items can be served at the same time. It can be cooked at the same time. Less chances of scorching or burning but constant attention is required and knowledge in maintaining pressure cookers are adequate to prevent accidents. Poaching. This involves cooking in minimum amount of liquid at temperature of 80 degrees to 85 degrees that is below the boiling point. Egg and fish are poached. There are no special air equipments that are required. Cooking method saves fuel and poached foods are easily digested. But if poached foods, it does not have any flavor in them, it is bland and therefore it may not be appealing to many people. Food can be scorched if the water evaporates due to carelessness. There is also what loss of water soluble nutrients due to leaching in water during poaching process. Let's look at dry heat method. Roasting is one of the dry heat method which in roasting, in roasting, food is cooked in a heated metal or frying pan without covering it. It's a quick method of cooking. It improves flavor, texture and color. Spices are usually roasted. During roasting process, some of the protein is denatured 
and the availability is reduced. Grilling process. Grilling or broiling refers to the cooking of food by exposing it to direct heat method. In this method, food is placed over and above a red hot surface and it is grilled. It enhances the flavor, appearance and color of the product and there is also minimum use of fat but constant attention to prevent scorching is required. Toasting process. In this method, foods if yet in between two heated elements to facilitate browning on both sides, bread slices are usually toasted. Baking process. Food gets cooked in an oven. The temperature ranges from 120 degrees to 260 degrees. Special equipment like baking oven is required. The food is kept uncovered in a container greased with fat and they are baked. Breads, cakes, biscuits are usually baked which improves the color, taste, texture and it becomes the food becomes fluffy. There are demerits as you require special equipments for baking. Sorting. Sorting is a method in which food is lightly tossed in little oil just enough to cover the base of the pan. The pan is covered with a lid and the flame or the intensity of the heat is reduced. Here the food is tossed occasionally using a spatula so that every piece gets in contact with oil and cooks evenly in its own steam. The product obtained by this method is slightly moist and tender but there is no liquid or gravy involved. Food cooked by sauteing are generally vegetables that are used as side dishes. It's a very good method to In this method, food to be cooked is brought in contact with large amount of oil. There are two types of frying, deep fat frying and shallow frying. In deep fat frying, the food is completely immersed in hot oil, whereas in shallow frying, only little oil or fat is used for frying and browning the foods. It's a very quick method, but the calorific value is very high. It makes the food delicious in terms of improving its flavor taste and texture but there are, if the food has a lot of moisture the food absorbs a lot of oil which makes the food soggy and fried foods there is possibility of using oil repeatedly which could lead to health hazards there are combination methods which are called as bracing bracing is a combination method of roasting and stewing in a pan with tight fitted lid Flavoring and seasonings are involved in braising process. You use two types of braising, two types of uh, cooking here, roasting or boiling for the purpose of braising or boiling and then deep fat frying or roasting and simmering. So it's a combination method of drying and moist heat method. Microwave cooking. Microwaves are used for the purpose of cooking foods which are basically electromagnetic waves of radiant energy with different wavelengths. The most commonly used type of microwave generator is an electronic device called as Mandeltron which generates radiant energy of high frequency. The simple microwave consists of a metal cabinet into which the Mandeltron is inserted. The cabinet is equipped with a metal fan that distributes the microwave throughout the cabinet. Foods placed in the oven is heated by microwaves from all direction. Food should be kept in a container made of plastic, glass or chinaware and not metal containers as metal containers will reflect microwave. The melts microwave is 10 times more faster than conventional cooking methods and it minimizes the loss of food and nutrients. Only food gets heated and food gets uniformly cooked. Leftovers can be reheated, but the demerits is you require a specialized equipment like a microwave for this process. And lot, lot of cooking methods like simmering, stewing and deep fat frying cannot be done using a microwave. Sous vide cooking. Sous vide means under pressure. It is a method of cooking in vacuum packed plastic pouches at precisely controlled temperatures. It alters the organoleptic qualities of food to make them suitable and attractive for consumption. 
So wheat cooking also makes the food safe and extends the shelf life to about 7 to 45 days. The food is prepared under vacuum condition, packed and heated. What are the types of sous vide cooking? We have three types, cook and hold, or cook and serve, cook and chill and cook and freeze. Cook and hold, the food is cold in a minimum temperature of about 54.4 degrees until it is served. Whereas in cook and chill and cook and freeze, the food is heated to pasteurize it, followed by rapid chilling in terms of cook and chill and rapid freezing in terms of cook and freeze. When it has to be served, it is reheated and then served. This is a tank for industrial sous vide cooking. What are the stages of sous vide cooking? Preparation of the raw material, which may include grilling or broiling, to develop the required color. Tougher cuts of meat may be mechanically tenderized or marinated in vinegar, wine, fruit juice, buttermilk, or yogurt. Alternatively, they may be brined for a few hours in a 3 to 10 percent salt solution which may include aromatic herbs and spices or meat may be kept at 2 to 3 degree percentage of salt solution for several hours or days until the salt concentration in the meat and the solution is equalized. Packing the product in a high gas barrier polyethylene or polypropylene pouches application of vacuum and sealing the package, cooking the product with hot water or steam at closely controlled temperature for a required time, rapid cooling of the product to 3 degrees of frozen temperature. When it has to be served, the package is reheated to 54 degrees in a hot cooling container and it is served for consumption. Thank you for watching.